Hello friends, welcome. Friends, I don't know whether you have seen this uh, ANI article, uh, which was posted on 25th of August 2025, where TREI chairman has been quoted saying that 70 to 80 percent of India's mobile data is consumed indoor. Now, the context behind this uh, quote is the TRAI's attempt to rate buildings on the basis of their digital infrastructure. So if you don't know, TRI has been doing some series of consultation and they released a manual which is called Rating of Properties for Digital Connectivity Regulation 2024, which gives guidelines to the property make uh, constructors to uh, equip the building with proper digital infrastructure so that in-building connectivity can be made available. So that whatever uh, technology that we are, we the mobile operators have deployed, the same can be available indoors. Currently, we have a huge issue of indoor connectivity, as well as we don't have optical fiber going into the house so that proper broadband connections can be provided. Now, friends, I have been following this whole development very closely, and I had done a video long back, and I'm going to show you the title of the video, which I had recorded, uh, I think, on uh, two months back, where I said that TRAI's building rating framework is a cosmetic reform. It is not actually, structurally, it is not going to give us any benefit. And this was a deep dive critic of TRI policy, and I have a reason for that. And today, I am going to give you the reason why I believe all this that TRI is doing is not going to help really uh, enabling good quality mobile indoor uh, coverage, which will benefit the consumers. And why I believe so, I will prove that with data. So listen, uh, so watch this video till the end. So friends, you know that in India, we have got different spectrum bands, which have been given to different operators. So this chart that you see here is a summary of spectrum bands across all different operators and PSUs, defense and vacant across all bands. So you see 600 megahertz, 700 megahertz, 800 megahertz, 900, 1800, 2100, 3500. And I have left the 26 gigahertz band aside because that really doesn't add any value because the coverage is very poor. So you see that the quantum of spectrum, which a particular operator is holding, has been listed down in this matrix across all the bands. And I have totaled it all at the bottom as well as horizontally. And then I have also totaled the sub gigahertz spectrum, which gives us very good indoor connectivity. So you see that the sub gigahertz spectrum total has been done at the bottom. Now, friends, I will fold this matrix and focus on the matrix, which is down below, which will give you a very good insight as to what kind of hypocrisy that we are seeing in our country, where a regulator is pushing for rating the buildings for ensuring that they provide good in-building coverage, infrastructure for in-building coverage, but the fundamental vehicle which can carry RF signal inside the buildings, that highway has been blocked or made narrow. So let's look at this, which will give you a very good understanding what is going on. Now, friends, what is this matrix all about? This matrix actually gives you percentages of holdings of the operators across these bands. So when I say percentage zero percent, what I'm doing, I'm basically, uh, you know, uh, sub uh, dividing this quantum in absolute terms with this value, which is the total. So whatever all is being added over here as 100 percent. So if you add all the percentage here, it will add up to 100 percent. Right. And then this is this is also going to be similarly added because this is where the total is being evaluated. The ratio, the denominator is this column, which I already showed you here. So let me open this, this total column, right? So this gives us a very good understanding as to how much spectrum an operator like Airtel is holding in what spectrum band to the proportion of total available spectrum here, right? So 
You'll see that in 600 megahertz band, Airtel is holding 0%, 700, 0%, 800, 8%, 900 MHz, 30%, 1800, 24%, 2100, 17%, 2300, 36%, 2500, 0%, and 3500, 27%. In all total, if you add everything total, is 19%. And in sub gigahertz, it is uh, Airtel is holding only 6.5% of the total quantum spectrum available in India. Now, similarly, you can look at Geo's number, VI's number, BSNL MTNS number. Now, what is eye-opener here, friends, is that there are there is a series of operators who are bankrupt, who have gone bankrupt, who is Arcom, Aircel, Estel. Now, if you see here, you will find that Arcom is holding 16% of the crucial 800 megahertz band, 2% of the 900 megahertz band, Aircel is holding 1% of the 900 megahertz band. And then you will find that if you go down below, if you add all this, Arcom, Aircel and Estel, they are holding 1% of the total spectrum. But on the sub gigahertz band, if you add the total spectrum holding, 3.1% of the total holding is being, is, is, uh, belongs to those operators who have gone bankrupt. Now, there is PSUs also, PSUs and defense. Now, if you look at PSUs and defense, you will find that railways are holding 33% of the 700 megahertz spectrum. Defense is holding 22% of the crucial 700 megahertz spectrum where BSNL is doing 4G and Reliance is doing 5G. In 800 megahertz, railways is holding 0%, defense is holding 3%, and 900 megahertz, railways is holding 4% and defense is holding 0%. And if you look at the total sub gigahertz band, railways is holding 12.3%, defense is holding 8.2%. And the total amount of spectrum that is vacant in the sub gigahertz band is 36.7%, close to 37%, right? So this gives us a very, very significant picture of the hypocrisy. And let me tell you why it is so hypocritic. And for that, I will point you to this particular portion of the chart. Now, again, we will focus on sub gigahertz spectrum because sub gigahertz spectrum has got better indoor penetration. You will notice that TSPs are only holding 40% of the total sub gigahertz spectrum and non-TSPs plus vacants are holding 60%. Means when I say non-TSPs, I'm talking about ARCOM, AirCell, STL, Railways, Defense plus backend, 60% of the whole of sub gigahertz spectrum, which includes 600, 700, 800, 900 megahertz spectrum, is being in the bucket which belongs to this, which is 60%, only 40%. Now, tell me, if 60% of the spectrum in the sub gigahertz band, which is the vital band for providing in-building connection, which will naturally carry the RF wave inside the building without you having to do all kind of infrastructure that the TRI is talking about, that you need to put a macro, micro base station, Pico base station, Wi-Fi connectivity and all this thing. Optical fiber cable is not going to be required. Your connection is going to carry natively inside the building because these bands have better propagation characteristics. They naturally penetrate indoor. So if 60% of the spectrum is lying vacant or belong to PSUs, railways, defense, and all those bankrupt operators together, and only 40% of the spectrum which is available in the sub gigahertz band belongs to the existing operator, how can you provide any worthwhile indoor mobile connectivity? How can you do that? There is no way we can do that. So instead of fixing this problem, of spectrum lying unused, which is the most important vehicle for providing indoor coverage and indoor data connectivity because you are using mobile phones. You are not going to be sitting on your laptop and computer because there are hardly anybody who actually can afford a laptop or broadband connection. <laughs> the broadband connection is costing 800 rupees. You don't, you, you need a mobile connectivity, right? Inside your building. Most of the people are only looking for mobile connectivity. We are not going to talk about those affluent people. We are talking about normal people who want to spend a mobile bill of 300 rupees, 400 rupees. They need connectivity inside. 
That's what we are talking about. And for that, we need sub gigahertz spectrum. 60% of the sub gigahertz spectrum is wasted. The vital spectrum, which can carry these air waves natively inside the building. Now you see the bifurcation between bankrupt TSP and the railways and defense is 3% bankrupt TSP. Railways and defense is holding 21% of the sub gigahertz band and the back end is 36.7%. So if you add all these three, it comes out to be 60%. So you actually have kept 37% of your sub gigahertz spectrum vacant. And you're talking about providing rating for buildings to provide in-building coverage. Why would they do that? Because there are no incentives. Why would they do that? There is no incentive because this kind of infrastructure requires huge amount of investments and cost. The best way to provide in-building connectivity to use the sub gigahertz spectrum which carry indoor natively without having to spend that kind of interest on infrastructure. So all these incentives and the manuals which TRI has come out with, in my view, is catching the nose roundabout. You can catch the nose right from, you know, which is the easiest way. You don't have to do all these things in India because it is just waste of paperwork, resources, rather than focusing on the real problem of India, where you can see sub gigahertz spectrum is priced like gold and platinum, and you are keeping the spectrum free, and you are wasting the spectrum in between, you know, let the bankrupt TSP holds a, a, a sizable amount of spectrum, and railways and defense also holding a sizable amount of, of the sub gigahertz spectrum, where they don't have to do any commercial activity. They actually have can live with having spectrum in non-commercial bands because the basic fundamental problem, why we need spectrum to be harmonized across all countries and we don't want this sub gigahertz band to be used by PSUs and railways is because the most important point about using a particular spectrum band, which is harmonious, is about device affordability. The base station cost does not differ if you change to a non-commercial band also. The device's cost matter because a device has to be, the economies of scale of that device has to cut across different countries who are using the similar spectrum band. So if you are going to block 700 megahertz spectrum band and give it to railways, give it to defense, give it to you know other agencies who are going to waste spectrum, then imagine that the kind of problems that we are going to face in our country where we have a vehicle to carry those indoor connectivity for which the TRI is saying in his article that 70 to 80 percent of India's mobile data is consumed indoors. How can you consume data indoors when your data does not penetrate inside because you have completely wasted your sub gigahertz spectrum and you are coming out with schemes and and methods to encourage the you know p, uh, the building owners to deploy micro base stations uh, pico cells inside the building why would they do that that is costly that is definitely much more costly than giving the mobile operators this spectrum which is lying unused 37% and releasing the spectrum from bankrupt TSP as well as railway and defense, giving it to them and they can be empowered to deliver mobile connectivity inside the buildings. Now, friends, let me give you a little bit of technical insight. What is the reference level of loss of signal between a low frequency band and a high frequency band in terms of coverage and power? Now, friends, I don't want you to get into complex equations. So don't worry about this box that you have, box one and box two. What I have done is I have done make it made it very simple. I have the transmitted power, the transmitted antenna gain, the receive antenna gain, the frequency and the distance all listed out here. And I can use this equation and you have to take it, uh, you know, at a phase value to calculate the receive power in dBm. So I am doing so. So if you transmit 40, d, 40 dBm of t, uh, TRP, it means transmitted power at the antenna port, and you have a transmit gain of 15 dB, and the receive gain of 0 dB, and you are using a 700 mega spectrum, you have a receive power of minus 34.3 dBm. 
right at the distance of 1 kilometer now this power which receive power can be converted into milliwatt if you can so the both the transmit power as well as the receive power so transmit power is how much milliwatt 10000 milliwatt right so it is actually 10 watt and the receive power power in milliwatt is 0.00 037 so it is 00037 you know right after decimal so, so imagine the kind of power erosion that takes place right when you even if you are traveling a distance of only one kilometer now look at if you are using 1800 megahertz band in 1800 megahertz band the transmit power is 10 watt and the receive power is how many zeros four zeros followed by six and if you calculate the ratio of these two, it comes out to be 6.61. That is the reason why 1800 megahertz penetration is much poorer than 700, 800, 900 megahertz spectrum. Because you can imagine the kind of power loss that takes place. And if you are going to put the low frequency band to good use, then imagine the kind of benefit that you can give to the nation and the wastage that we are creating out of doing all this kind of work, which is completely unnecessary. There could be some value to it. I'm not saying that this is completely unnecessary. Sorry for that. But you can realize more value than giving the low frequency band to the operator so that they can give you better quality connectivity. And you may not have to rely on these kind of rating rules because doing it using in building solution is going to be disproportionate amount of money have to be spent compared to doing through a macro cell which naturally penetrates indoors that's all friends in this video i hope you understand and that is the reason i did this video to give you a picture as to how we are going wrong and what kind of hypocritic situation that we are in and where the focus should be we are digressing and getting our focus in a different area and we are saying that we are fixing a problem and the problem is that 70 to 80 percent of india's mobile data is consumed indoor thank you friends for your time and listening till the end i'll come back with a new video and a new topic next time thank you very much friends